the different qualities of models, the purpose of a model also makes an appearance here, with models of massing, diagrammatic models, study models and detail models, all of which you'll see represented in the show here. Fundamentally, the model is an honest artefact. As a designer, it leaves you very few places to hide. And this is why some students like it and why some students hate it. The writer Wilhelm Flusser catalogued a series of gestures for one of these books. This included the gestures of photographing, writing, filming, smoking a pipe and telephoning, amongst many other more prosaic and mundane acts. It becomes immediately apparent that models involve a wide range of gestures, both in their making and in their appreciation. You'll no doubt be pr quite frustrated by being presented with the, uh, the presence of so many of these beautiful models placed in uh, cabinets beyond the reach of your hands, as so many of these objects are best observed in a tactile manner, held in the hand and turned around. To me, the gestures of model making included, but aren't limited to, the gestures of measuring, the geometric nature of model making requiring both accurate measurement and tolerance, scoring with the scalpel blade, which can bring form out of flat sheets of material, folding operations, which bring three dimensions out of this flat hand, gluing, the pasting and applying, each glue having its own properties, and selecting, ensuring the right materials are used for the job, testing it in the hand, comparing it to the material or construction which you're trying to represent. Casting, where you take an imprint or a negative. Pouring, where you use a cast and produce multiples. Holding, with the patience of the model maker waiting for the glue to dry. Pressing, the transfer of a force from the digits into the model. And much as a basket weaver described to me that the basket is a form of a biography, of the uh, forces and energy that they put into the materials. The idea of clamping, the application of mechanical pressure, the pushing of elements together, the assembling and disassembling, the rotating and weighing of a model in the hand being a kind of haptic appreciation of the object itself. So that when we talk about model making as an essential skill for architecture, it is in reality many skills all at once. It's a demonstration of the geometry and materiality at the heart of the discipline. It's a proof of concept not so distant from a mathematical proof, but the concept in question is a creative and aesthetic one. We can get tied up in distinctions between the analogue and the digital, but methods and techniques are intertwined and mixed in a wide range of permutations here. Some models retain the fingerprint of the model maker in a lump of clay, whilst others represent that architect's understanding of a complex precedent study. A model of one's observation rather than a replica of the object in question. Each model bears the traces of its making and how it was crafted, and each method and technique made possible by our workshop and our invaluable expert staff of Jim and Scott, each method has its properties, merits and drawbacks. So what you're seeing here is the result of a series of decisions on materials, assembly, geometry, and ultimately of design. And it's worth spending a moment to work back from the model that you're looking at to see precisely how it was made. Making lies at the heart of architecture and is central to teaching in our, uh, the Manchester School of Architecture. And I'm very happy and honoured to present this latest selection of models from the B15 workshop at Manchester School of Architecture. So, Enjoy.